1340 96.5 KVGC is promised. Uh, Bryce Bennett from Cal Fire is with us today. And uh, Bryce, uh, the latest info we had was released at 10 o'clock. 790 acres, 40% containment. Crews worked through the night, uh, you know, shoring up uh, containment lines. More crews expected to be back in today. Uh, we There were some evacuations still last night. So what's the latest as of 8.15 this morning? Right, so no uh, change on the acreage. We're uh, holding at 790 acres. We have the containment level up to 50%. Oh, okay. The reason why we're, we're very very conservative with that number is we have a lot of open line out there yes this was a fast moving grass fire and grass typically goes out pretty easily and mm-hmm. and it and it stays there it's not like a big giant timber fire so um the fire is not moving it's not growing you're not going to see much smoke off of it today okay. but there is a lot of oak inside of that fire i mean it's a grassy oak woodland we sure. all know the area sure. and what do we put in our fireplaces that burns the hottest and the longest right oak so it's we have a lot of fire crews out there today. They're, they're getting in there to, to get all the hot spots out. It's supposed to be warm weather coming up, so we want to make sure we have 100% mop up on this thing. Bryce, I noticed yesterday, I went back and forth to Ione a couple of times, and when the fire first broke out, I was actually on the road and was up on Cyclone Hill and looked down, and oh, my God. It, it was interesting because it was burning in, in three different colors. There was white. There was black smoke, and then there was the combination of that kind of amber-colored smoke. Why did we have those three distinct? It was almost like Neapolitan ice cream. Boom, 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 burning. No, I'm serious. You know what I mean? It wasn't – normally it burns into one – you know, you'll see the, the one smoke and then the next smoke, but it was like boom, boom, boom. Well, that's, so, that's very astute of you. So, yes. Uh, so the different colors of smoke uh, will depict what is burning and how much – uh, humidity it has. Okay. So, uh, fortunately, no homes were destroyed okay. um, by this fire. Uh, we are expecting maybe a couple outbuildings here or there, but typically, what happens is you you have. We're still actually early in in the summer seasons here, so mm-hmm. there's some some vegetation out there that still has some moisture. Okay. So white smoke's going to be the uh, the whiter, clear smoke, as you would see, is is where it's. Cons- almost completely consuming. You're getting mm-hmm. a, a lot of, of heat, um, so you're not seeing much smoke. And it can also be when fire crews put water on it. Black smoke is more, or darker smoke, is more derivative of something with more moisture in it or something with a chemical in it. Um, tire fires obviously burn sure. black, that sort of thing. So uh, as it was moving, because it, it had some wind on it, the fire was burning towards the east, southeast, um, it was encountering different uh, fuels, bush, shrubs, bushes, trees, of different moisture content. So you'd see different mm-hmm. smoke colors as it went. There was a term used yesterday, and I hadn't heard it since the Pattison fire in Calaveras County some years ago, which was on a windy, windy day. It was on a Friday, windy day. Uh, critical rate of spread. Haven't heard that term in a long time. Honestly, we haven't used it in a while, uh, but this fire had some speed, um, and we we were uh, we were shocked that it was it was moving that fast. Um, mm-hmm. So it yes, it was deemed critical rate of spread. Um, that is something that makes firefighters, uh, for lack of a better term, spidey senses. Yeah. you know, yeah. get on point because um, it's moving. Fortunately, the humidity was high enough that we weren't getting a substantial amount of spotting ahead of it. Uh, otherwise, there would be a different outcome, and this would be a different interview right it, now. It was it was interesting on it uh, in Ione. I was down in Ione, and it was blue skies, clear air, couldn't smell a thing. I come to Jackson. There's ash falling on my car. There's smoke in the valley. There's smoke in Jackson. It's you can smell it. So was it was it was it the wind just blowing in a southeasterly direction and blowing it up this way? Is yes, that... exactly. And and when you when we get this fire mapped and you get to see a map of this fire, it's actually very narrow. Mm-hmm. It's long and narrow because it had wind behind it, a pretty decent wind. Um, so it was it was quite directional. Um, so containing it on the edges was actually. Um, you know, uh, a regular occurrence for us, and air tankers were painting the retardant lines and whatnot. Did get- the fire jump uh, Highway 124 at all? 
No, it, okay, it, it did not so, reach 124. See, I thought I thought what, what what you would do is you would try to just kind of manage it and bring it up and stop it, and hopefully 24 would be or 124 would be like a a natural fire break for you there. And it yeah, it, we actually 100. percent We totally use natural occurring roads and whatnot to help contain fires. Uh, fortunately, we had Willow Creek Road mm -hmm. before 124, and that was uh, kind of our our line in the sand that we drew. Um, it did slop over in one small section, but we had fire crews right there when it did, yeah. um, and they and they caught that. Uh, we're talking with Bryce Bennett from Cal Fire this morning about the Irish fire broke out yesterday about 2.40. Uh, Bryce, so let's talk about road closures and evacuations. Do we still have those in effect today? Uh, well, unfortunately, we do, um, and uh, we really appreciate the, the public's understanding on this. Um, it's just not safe quite yet for the public to be back in there. Uh, fire managers are evaluating it right now because mm -hmm. we want people back in their homes. So they are on the ground looking at it, figuring out where there is an issue, handling that first so that we can mm -hmm. get them back in there. We're trying to get them back in there before this afternoon. Uh, road closures currently exist for um, anything around Willow Creek Estates and uh, basically Willow Creek Road. Bryce, is there any live fire currently or is it just a smoldering fire? I mean, there. Are, I guess what I'm asking: Are there any flames? We're not fighting flames right now. No, no, we're not. The fire, the fire is not growing in size. Mm -hmm. Forward progress has been stopped. There will be some logs and whatnot that are smoldering within the perimeter of the fire. Mm -hmm. Now, this fire did burn through a neighborhood, and when a fire, when a fire burns through a neighborhood like Willow Creek Estates, that had excellent defensible space. Thank you, Willow mm -hmm. Creek Estates. Everyone did a fantastic job. Um, it gives the fire crews an opportunity to get in there, get up next to your home, and protect it. Yeah. And so it burned around homes. It didn't burn through the homes, mm -hmm. um, which was great. And that's exactly what we needed to happen. Um, a lot of the, the residents were seeing just how quickly the fire was moving through there. Fortunately, um, we, um, we haven't had any reported injuries at this time. Um, so yeah. um, we're looking at as positive as outcome as we could get. On you know, this one. the it, it, it kind of brought to home what a fire can do. Like I said, we were getting ash here in Jackson, which could just have well been embers that could have blown around, and the fire could have, you know, gone over 124 and lit on the other side and <laughs> gone up towards. You know, if it gets in that canyon right there and would go up through dry town and uh, Amador well, city. And well, you're already alluding to something that happened on the Butte fire. And, and if had this fire occurred later in the summer where we had a lower humidity or a red flag day, mm -hmm. all those embers that were landing in Jackson could start new fires, every single one of them. Wow. So when we say a fire is spotting ahead of itself up to a mile away, that's when situations really change mm -hmm. for, for large and damaging wildfires, which is why everybody needs to be ready for wildfire. Yeah. Check out readyforwildfire.org. Really pay attention to evacuations and get a plan together. And it is still not too late to get that defensible space. Just do the the right thing at the right time with the right equipment, right? Exactly. Never be doing that stuff after 10 a.m. Do not use a lawn mower for anything but a green lawn. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are doing weed abatement, you should be using a, a nylon corded device of some kind. Sure. Best guess, estimation, crews will be on scene through the weekend? Uh, honestly, probably the next couple of days, yeah. yeah. And and that's just to make sure nothing blows out. We don't, you know, we are with the weather that's coming. Mm -hmm. We don't need one ember starting a new fire. Yeah. Um, but really, we're just pushing to get people back in their houses sure. this afternoon. Bryce, why don't you go over the uh, evacuations again and the road closures for us, if you would. Sure. It's the Willow Creek Estates area, um, off of, and it's all the roads around Willow Creek Road. Um, there's a bunch in there, so I'm, I'm not going to list every sure. single one of them off. Uh, but the evacuation sh center right now is at the Ione Junior High School. Uh, off of South Mill Road in Ione. And, uh, again, we really appreciate your understanding. We're going to get you back in your homes as quickly as possible. 790 acres, and we're up to 50% containment. CHP was saying uh, Willow Creek, uh, just south of 16, was a was a hard closure. They weren't letting people in. Is that still? I, it is. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, if folks live in the area, can they go back, or just nobody can go back in? Nobody can go back. Okay. That, you know, there's that's... That's why there's a closure there. It's for everyone's safety. Mm -hmm. so looking, I mean, how did people react to it? Did they, did they go? Did they 
did they fight it? Some. Um, you know, there's there's always a few stragglers mm -hmm. um, or people who will not leave their properties, and that is their right. Uh, however, it's not the safest thing to do. Yeah. You know, fire crews are there to put out the fire, not have to pull you and throw yeah. you in a fire right. engine. Because right. once we do evacuations and you don't evacuate, and then you change your mind and call 911, we can't necessarily get to you. Yeah. So yeah. the idea is to evacuate early so that you are safe. Bryce, what, what are we going to see today? from the fire we're we gonna see a lot of smoke gonna see a lot of fire engine activity what's gonna well knock on wood uh you'll see no smoke mm -hmm. um but there are a substantial amount of crews out there you're looking at uh what over 30 fire engines easily um bulldozers hand crews they're mm -hmm. all in there working hard so if you don't live in the area once the evacuations are get pulled it's not a time to be out right. driving around let the fire crews get the work done make sure it's safe for everyone and also drive drive very carefully in the yeah. area, please. All right. No, we had a little accident uh, head on uh, <laughs> during the evacuation. No, it's not funny, but during the evacuation, yes. Was it was it pretty smoky there uh, at the, at the side of the fire? Was it, it was. It was near the, zero visibility. The wind was blowing so hard it blew yeah. the smoke the the column over, um, and visibility was definitely yeah. substandard. All right. Bryce Bennett from Cal Fire, thank you very much for stopping by today. Absolutely. And updating us. Any so again about the evacuations. They're in the process of being reevaluated right now, and we could see those change sometime today. Absolutely. All right. Bryce, thanks for stopping by today. Absolutely.